The New Age worldview is difficult to define as an integrated belief system, since most New Agers reject any notion of doctrine, creed, or organization. It's impossible to narrow down since it's actually a vast assortment of beliefs and practices. New Agers do not believe in evil. Therefore, they do not accept man's problem as separation by sin from God. Instead, they believe that each of us has forgotten his or her own divinity. Therefore, the New Age solution is to seek higher consciousness through meditation, breathing exercises, yoga, crystals, channeling, and more. Each of these diverse practices has the same purpose, to awaken the God in man. Each New Ager fills their plate with whatever combination satisfies their craving. It's really the ultimate have-it-your-way religion. Because New Agers believe God is in everything, and everything is a part of God, they must conclude that everything, in essence, is spiritual. The things that we can see and feel are only a manifestation of spirit, and all matter will melt away when universal consciousness is achieved. This view leads the New Ager to believe all matter can be controlled by an enlightened mind, one that is in touch with the God within. Health, wealth, relationships are all perceived as the result of mind over matter. All New Agers believe in monism which is a worldview in which all of reality can be reduced to one thing or substance. They believe that all that exists is derived from a single source of divine energy. In essence, all is one and one is all. They also believe in pantheism, the worldview that God, not necessarily the Christian God, is the ultimate source of being, and that all of reality is a manifestation of this God. All that exists is God, and God is all that exists. Pantheism sees no real distinction between God and the universe. All things are divine, or part of God, such as people, rocks, trees, and stars. Since everything and everyone is a part of God, we have to get in touch with the God within to achieve total cosmic unity. This leads naturally to the concept of the divinity of the individual, where we are all gods. New Agers also hold a panentheism worldview, which states that God is all that exists. God is at once the entire universe and transcends the universe as well. Panentheism is essentially a combination of theism and pantheism. It claims God is greater than the universe and that the universe is contained within God. Events and changes in the universe affect and change God. As the universe grows and learns, God also increases in knowledge and being. New Age theology is most definitely not biblical. In fact, it is extreme heresy that challenges the character of God and makes him more like a man. God is present everywhere, but God is not everything. God knows everything, whether actual or possible. God does not learn because he already has all knowledge. God is not affected by things that occur in the universe, but only in that sin angers him and holiness pleases him. Our actions do not change God, or impact his essential being. New Agers believe in a universal religion. Since all is God, then only one reality exists, and all religions are simply different paths to that ultimate reality. The universal religion can be visualized as a choice of many spiritual paths to reach the same destination. Some are hard, others easy. There is no one correct path. All paths eventually reach the top.
They anticipate that a new universal religion, which contains elements of all current faiths, will evolve and become generally accepted worldwide. Only faith in Jesus Christ will save. 1 John 5, 12 says, Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. It's as simple as that. Only Christianity, faith in the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, leads to God's forgiveness and eternal life. No one comes to the Father except through the Son. John 14, 6. It does make a difference what you believe. New Agers believe in reincarnation. That is the concept of the eternal birth, death, birth cycle, where a soul moves from body to body. The status of each successive body, whether human or animal, is the direct result of the quality of of the life of the soul led in the previous body. Thus, a good life results in rebirth to a higher quality form, and a bad life results in rebirth to a lower quality form. This forward and backward progression is based on the law of karma. Karma teaches that good deeds are rewarded and bad deeds are punished. The ultimate goal in this karma cycle is for the soul to progress to the highest level of existence and become one with the universe. Though not all New Agers adhere to reincarnation, most believe in some form or another, and many believe the Bible was changed to remove any verses that might have taught reincarnation. But this accusation only shows the limitation of their knowledge. The one passage that some point to as evidence for reincarnation is Matthew 17, 10-12, which links John the Baptist with Elijah. However, the passage does not say that John the Baptist was Elijah reincarnated, but that he would have fulfilled the prophecy of Elijah's coming if the people had believed his words, and thereby believed in Jesus the Messiah. The people specifically asked John the Baptist if he was Elijah, and he said, no, I'm not. The concept of reincarnation is completely without foundation in the Bible, which clearly tells us that we die once and then face judgment. New Agers believe in the chakras. A chakra is a spiritual PowerPoint used in yoga and Eastern mysticism. The word chakra describes one element in a highly complex system of thought about the energies of the body. The chakras are part of Hindu belief that there are seven chakras, centers of psychic and spiritual energy, going from the base of the spine to the top of the head. Certain Hindu teachings claim that the Kundalini an energy force that is like a coiled snake in the base chakra needs to rise to the topmost chakra as part of the spiritual enlightenment process. There are seven types of chakras that are spread out from the base of your spine to the top of your head. The spiritual experience achieved through this type of meditation is undeniably real, and it may feel like a connection to the divine, but it is not of God. The Bible says that we should reject spiritual messengers who claim to be from God, but speak a different gospel. The message of New Age mysticism is contrary to the gospel. The gospel tells us that God reached down to save humanity. But New Age mystics assert that man can, via various techniques involving chakras and the like, attain a godlike state or connect with the divine. Belief in chakras is a deception that Satan uses to lead people away from the grace of the Lord. Spiritual enlightenment does not come through chakras, but through a relationship with the one true God.
New Agers practice holistic health. This is a collection of healing techniques that attempt to cure disorders in mind, body, and spirit, and to promote wholeness and balance in the individual. The New Age movement upholds evolution, both of body and spirit. They believe that man is developing and will soon leap forward into new spiritual horizons. Many New Age practices are designed to push one ahead into that horizon. Some of them are astral projection, which is training your soul to leave your body and travel around. They use channeling to contact spirits so they may speak through you or to guide you. They use crystals to purify your bodies and your mind's energy systems. They also practice visualization, where you use mental imagery to imagine yourself in the presence of a divine being, of being held of a sickness, or material gain in the future. The ultimate goal for New Agers is personal transformation through enlightenment. They believe this intense mystical experience can be brought about through practices such as guided imagery, hypnosis, meditation, and sometimes the use of hallucinogenic drugs. New Agers hope to develop new potentials within themselves such as the ability to heal oneself and others, psychic powers, and a new understanding of the workings of the universe. Some believe when sufficient numbers of people have achieved these powers, they expect that a major spiritual, physical, psychological, and cultural planet-wide transformation will happen. This will bring about the new world order, which will come as the age of Aquarius unfolds. A new age will increase in membership and influence. This will be a utopia in which there is a one world government, an end to wars, disease, hunger, pollution, and poverty. Gender, racial, religious, and other forms of discrimination will cease. People's allegiance to their tribe or nation will be replaced by a concern for the entire world and its people. The time that this will happen is the age of Aquarius and is a reference to the procession of the zodiac. The earth passes into a new sign of the zodiac approximately every 2,000 years. Some believe that the Earth entered the constellation Aquarius in the late 19th century, so that the present era is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. This new age is supposed to bring in peace and enlightenment and reunite man with God. Man is presently considered separated from God, not because of sin, but because of lack of understanding and knowledge concerning the true nature of God and reality. For many New Agers who believe that humanity is now shifting from the Messiah Age to the Aquarian Age, Jesus was the avatar of the Age of Pisces. He represented that age through his actions and teachings, as seen from New Age viewpoints. The term avatar comes from a Hindu word, avatars, which means descents, describing a deity who descended into human carnation. Jesus is listed here along with Gandhi, Say Baba and Muhammad. Avatar developed as a term applied only to incarnations of the Hindu deity Vishnu. According to this view, since the birth of Christ came at the beginning of the age of Pisces and 2000 years have now passed, the age of Pisces is ending and the age of Aquarius is upon us. The 
The New Age Jesus is the Jesus of the new spirituality. Jesus is the man who realized Christ consciousness, the innate divinity in all men. Christ consciousness is described as an awareness each of us has, which can be awakened by our will of the soul's oneness with God. New Agers describe Christ consciousness as the universal consciousness, oneness with God, manifested by Jesus, Krishna, and other avatars, and is the realization of God eminent in all creation. Contained within the Poseidon avatar is the New Age Christ as the one who awakens Christ consciousness within. This avatar also is a man, Jesus, who became the Christ. As astrologer Ogan puts it, let us make it absolutely clear that when we use the word Christ, we do not necessarily mean Jesus. The Christ is the final step in the evolution of man. It is a level of consciousness in which the individual has completely unified his self with the Godhead. In this respect, Buddha was a Christ, as was Krishna, as was Jesus. As in most New Age thinking, Jesus becomes the Christ through attaining the Christ consciousness, the awareness of the divine self. Jesus and the Christ are separate because anyone who achieves the spiritual awareness of the inner Christ can become the Christ. Or as pop singer Jewel puts it, we all will be Christ when we hear ourselves say, we are that to which we pray. Jesus never taught that we are God, have an inner divinity, or can develop Christ consciousness. He was clear that if we believed in him, we would have eternal life. This is the core theme of both the Old and New Testaments, such as Isaiah 45, 21, where God is called Savior, and Isaiah 53, which predict the birth, suffering for sins, and everlasting kingdom of Jesus.